Hey everyone, and welcome to Hollywood Hills episode number 47. As you can see, the roof cap is on. The black bags under my eyes are definitely on. This is gonna be our holding pattern as we get ourselves ready to go into the production for GXCCs that obviously happened this weekend where we wrapped up all the championships. But as the boys from LiveX are now gonna be bleeding for the next two and a half weeks to get those productions out before the Christmas close down so that you guys can celebrate as you are supposed to. We're gonna now talk about what happened at the roof. Two weeks ago, I managed to get the job to go up there. I was on the live mic and it was absolutely fantastic. Remember last year, we didn't get to go roofing because of the close down and problems with crossing the borders. This year, we managed to get it done. This will go down as one of those roofs. It was a wet, cold, gnarly one. There was massive passes for the guys to deal with and the weather really, really played a massive, massive, massive role. No round the houses, no enduro cross, so it was straight out the gate on the Thursday into the time trial where TT, Travis Teasdale, went fastest, putting not much, 20 seconds into the reigning champ, Wade Young. Wade obviously came into this round on fire. He's been walking away with the number three in the world this year, so that's his highest ever world ranking. He's in good nick, but also remember, we've got two other dudes with top 10 world rankings, and that's TT and Matty Green coming off incredible international seasons. So those were always gonna be key players to watch out for. Then just three weeks, I think it was, before the roof, Blake Goodsight got the call up from the factory brother leader tread KTM team. And this was a surprise pick as well, because basically they didn't have anyone that was gonna be a podium threat on their enduro squad. So he's famously a one day specialist. He's a super enduro, former world champion. So multi-day events aren't his bag, baby, but he lined up and signed up and got the job done. Anyway, so tough, tough first day out in the mountains after the time trial, and we started to see a bit of a theme happening. The weather came in, and already at, I think it was 40 Ks, give or take 40 Ks in, the first self-refuel, Wade and TT came one hour and 30 minutes in behind schedule. So it was clear that the track wasn't running as it should be, so it was gonna really have to be affected by the slow pace. And the reaction was made halfway through that day to trim what was gonna be a 200 kilometer day down into 139 kilometer day. Still, the riders, the top riders, were in the saddle over seven hours. Now, in roof terms, that's about right. You know, you want the guys to be out there suffering and really earning their bacon, but it was brutal conditions. The gold riders, some of the gold riders were out there for something like 18 hours. I think it was Graham Hedgecock had the record on day number one for the gold, 18 hours in the seat. And he lined up and completed and competed in the next day as well. The final results, and I'm rushing through this a little bit, I do appreciate that. The final results tell the story of Wade hammering the nail in the last quarter of day number one where he went to bed with an overnight lead of 31 minutes over TT. TT was the best of the rest though. He kind of showed a wheel in the early stages and then in the last mountain pass and on the way down to DSP, it was all about Wade pulling the numbers. TT was second overnight, Greeny was third overnight, and then fourth, fifth, and sixth was a big battle between Will Slater, who's the king of the MP, a real good dude as well. I like to see him run the numbers, and he was the top privateer as well, beating out on Blake Goodsight and on Walker as well. Those were the guys that were really duking it out just outside of the podium positions. The next day, the theme continued, where we actually saw the race get trimmed down quite tight as well, 200 Ks trimmed down to about 65 Ks, but it, it made it a slightly shorter day, but still a brutal day, harsh weather conditions. Anyway, it was Wade that got the job done. So Wade now becomes a six-time roof champion. The record, by the way, is held by Alfie Cox with nine wins, so he's well on his way. This was the second time in as many times of running the roof that we had a full South African lockout. Remember last time around it was Wade, Scotty B, and Flanny. This time around, Wade, TT, and Greeny. So, the South Africans are definitely strong. I think if the international guys start coming back, they will have some competition. The likes of Jarvis, still gonna be a mix. Uh, I'd like to see Manny Lettenbickner coming across here as well. Maybe father and son going at it as well, because there's gonna be a challenge thrown down. I can see it coming. Uh, the Lettenbicklers versus the Hedgecocks. I can see that one coming down the pipe for sure. And I'm gonna be championing, uh, trying to drive that one forward for next year. But it was a real challenging roof, real tough conditions, and everyone from gold, silver, bronze, and the iron class, anyone who was up there, and I was there with you guys. I wasn't out in the mountains, but I was there with you, and it was a suffer fest as well. 
The Fussbait Award going to Will, uh, Wild Will Gillett, and he spent the longest time out there in the mountains, almost 30 hours in all over a racing weekend. This was a brutal roof, and that's exactly what it needs to be. It needs to be harsh, it needs to be gnarly, and I hopefully the, the whole world situation gets calmed down next year and the guys can really work on uh, building themselves up to roof. You can see that there was a gap in a lot of people's training this year where they weren't able to compete in all of the events and all of the training to build up to roof, but I believe next year is gonna be absolutely mint. It was a great, great, great event and a fantastic way to end off the extreme season. Of course, me and the boys now are getting ourselves ready to just polish up all the edits for the GXCCs, so stand by for that. This is Holding Pattern, and we've got three more episodes of Hollywood still to go before Christmas sign-off. We'll see you guys later.